exhibition. So we went in front of the uh, zoning board in April, and we got approved for our floor error ratio, our side yard setbacks, and our block coverage. The only variance that was not approved was for an existing rear shed, which they requested that we remove, which we happily did to satisfy the board. Um, I also submitted an updated site plan with all of the engineering requirements to uh, on engineering, who reviewed it, and it's my understanding that they seem to be uh, Exactly. Right. right. Yeah. There, there are no comments. Doug, right? Uh, just the yard drain. Yeah. The yard drain. Do you have any, any issues with that? No, not at all. Not at all. I only added the overflow because it was one of the requirements on the previous. There was a comment about eliminating the 90 degree, and I wasn't sure where that was. Uh, right before the catch basin, it makes it bend. I see. Right there. So you'd rather go straight to the catch yeah. basin? Okay. Yes. I'll make that revision and send you an updated copy. Okay. Any comments from anyone on the board? Any comments from anyone in the audience on this matter? No, Marianne, do you have a resolution on this? Draft resolution? Uh, whereas in March 2018, Patrick and Elizabeth O'Hanlon applied for site plan approval to legalize an existing shed and, co and to construct an addition to their house at 22 South Dutcher Street, which is located in the View Preservation District in the Historic District, although it is not a contributing building in the Historic District. The improvements would require variances for coverage encroachment since of the side and rear yards and FAR, which variances the Zoning Board of Appeals on March 27th granted to permit the addition to the house but not to legalize the shed. And whereas Han Engineering reviewed the plan and in a memorandum dated March 5th listed a number of issues, most of which were addressed to Han's satisfaction in a subsequent submission. The revised plan showed the shed to be removed. The planning board held a public hearing on March 7th and May 2nd. The proposed improvements would not impact the view of the Hudson River from neighboring properties. It's a type 2 action under CEQA. Therefore, be it resolved that the planning board grants the application for site plan approval of the improvements reflected in the drawing entitled O'Hanlon residence prepared by William Wood Architect, subject to compliance with the Han memo dated May 1st, 2018. I have a motion to approve the resolution. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Next item is 2018-10, Kerry and Claudia Houston, 30 Half Moon Lane. Shabon, the architect for the uh, Houston's um, 30 Half Moon. Um, we will uh, I'll, I'll take you through the uh, um, our responses to the uh, letter we received from uh, from Mr. Uh, Palmer, and um, starting with uh, item number one, which was uh, which is the issue of our our um, exceeding the coverage by 32 um, percent. We um, we. There was an existing concrete pad that we added to our coverage calculation, an existing flagstone area. These are marked H, is the flagstone area. Um, and this over area over here is where we have the um, air conditioning pad. And, uh, but still, with, with our revised coverage calculations, we're still at a 2% reduction. Um, I should point out also that the uh, existing coverage on this property was permitted back in, uh, in uh, 1986. Um, a, a CFO was a, a granted in October of 1986 for the coverage. I think that's important uh, that that be entered into the record. Our work is actually, again, reducing the coverage by 2%. Uh, there was a comment about attic height, that the attic height should be provided. So um, on sheet 201, 
Um, actually, I think I'm not going to go through all the sheets. I'm just going to go through the list. It's going to take too long. But uh, we responded to the attic coverage. Memo, was that from, what was the date of that memo? That, um, well, this was your, your comments for the last, uh, the last submission. Oh, oh, did you get the, the revised first memo? Uh, yes, we have the revised memo. Okay. Uh, here's just showing how we comply. Yeah, yeah, there are only two outstanding items on the May 1st uh, memo, which is one, the, the, uh, the fact that you do need the variance for coverage. Right. And the two is the pre-treatment should be provided for the proposed stormwater. Okay, system. so you don't need me to address our compliance with the other no, I think, uh, uh, Okay. Doug and, and Ed were fine with the comments that were that okay. with your responses to, to All right, and then our civil engineer can address the, is, is it Yes. He can address the issue of the uh, stormwater. The stormwater, yeah. Laura Beda from Hudson Engineering. Um, with regard to the comment regarding the pre-treatment, we can relocate the overflow to be located between the addition and the Coltec to serve as both pre-treatment with the sump box and serve as the overflow for the system, if that's okay with Han. Other than that, we that's should it. be fine. Okay. Any comments from uh, any board members? Yeah, last time we had a question about the uh, construction access to the back. Yeah, uh, for Yeah, we've adjusted we, we it to do, avoid. You're, you're going to come off the driveway? Yes. Rather than you're still going to go around <coughs> facing the building from the road, around the left side of the house? Yeah, around the left side of the house, yes. And there's, there's a lot of trees there. You yeah, actually, we... How are you going to get between them? Uh, 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 yeah. It was requested that we uh, provide a landscape plan, which we did. And uh, in the landscape plan, protection of that tree is indicated. And, and, and just verbally, how are you going to do that? Well, I think you can probably address more precisely how that's done. Because it's, it's a pretty narrow gap between yeah, the trees. I mean, given where the canopies of the trees are, the construction actions... Back by the fence, the, the, the trees get pretty narrow. I mean, the we're just driving trucks here. I don't think there's anything, I guess, well, too dense. Well, well, I think, though, you had... You address uh, those, that comment was made last month, and I believe that then that you addressed it. I think Suzanne Nolan, our landscape architect, had comments about that and asked that you put a bed of the wood chips down um, in that area. In that yeah. area, and, and obviously fence, you know, um, tree protection fencing along that area too. But but put a heavy enough layer of wood chips down that will protect the roots. Not a problem. Thing. Could, could you make a note on the plans with that? Well, I, uh, I think it's, yeah, a it's on there. Okay. It's on the landscape plan. Good. Thank you. Yeah, that's all. Any yeah. other comments? Did you have a comment? Well, there, uh, there, we received a letter from a neighbor um, commenting about the third chimney, the, the addition chimney, that it was, and I don't know if, if this was intentional or not, that it's higher and larger than the other two chimneys. Is that yes, um, I'm not aware of this letter. Okay. What, what is the, uh, the normal protocol of these letters? Are they submitted at the meeting or in advance of the meeting? I don't know. That comment go. Okay. Yeah. I received it late last week. Or so. The new channel. Should this be read into the uh, record? Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would take issue with the uh, chimney being visible. Um, you know, we did our we did our sightline drawings. We did. Um, yeah, do you have those photographs with you? Yeah, we have photographs that. Uh, <coughs> and the most indicative drawing really is the. Um, These are the uh, the sightline drawings, and we're talking about a uh, a dot which is really barely visible on the site plan over here. And then um, you can see in the photographs that were taken uh, before uh, a couple of weeks ago, before there was any foliage on the trees, that uh, it, it is physically impossible to um, see any of the addition. Any other comments? Any questions? Okay. Well, I think except for the chimney, because that's what sticks out of, on the top and the back. Right. I just wasn't sure if, if it was in, if it was intentional if you if it was intentional that it was 
Well, the, the chimney has to comply with the uh, required height um, clearance from the roof, and, and that's we took it to the absolute minimum allowable height off of the uh, off of the roof. Hey, did you have any comment about that? No, I, I actually that was my comment uh, earlier. That basically, it isn't the minimum code required height. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, function properly be going below. There was there also a question about. The existing chimneys and yeah, the new, existing the chimneys. We, yeah, since the uh, our meeting last time, we went and did some probes, and we discovered that the existing construction is cinder block with brick veneer, with a little bit of an air gap between the brick and the cinder block. So we can add stone without any increase, possibly even a decrease in the thickness of the Good. existing chimneys. Thank you. Any other comments from any of the board members? Can I, can I just say, I, I, I have to say, I, I really appreciate your renditions. I mean, I think they're very clear, and they're, um, they're color-coded perfectly so that everybody can understand what's added, what's taken away. It, it's, it's very nicely done. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments from any members in the audience? Yes. Hi. Um, You'll have to come up and take the microphone and state your name and address. Anne Hallowell. We'll wait till you get up to the microphone. Yeah, Anne Hallowell. And, and we're the neighbors who wrote the letter, I think. Mm -hmm. It's probably the only letter. So, Arthur, the question is just, um, we put a picture in. Did Arthur get to see the photograph? Yeah, they're attached to the uh, Okay. Okay. Um, you're absolutely right. From, that, from one, one vantage point, we don't, see, it doesn't, we don't see anything. But from our garden, we really do. And it really does. Um, impede our view, not to the point where we would ask that there not be a chimney and not be that addition, because that would be a crummy thing to do. Mostly, it was just about, the, again, the size and width of it. It's not possible to have all three chimneys the same. You're saying that if you made them all the same height, it, they wouldn't conform legally? Is that what you're saying, Ed? The code today, if they designed the proposed new chimneys for the state code. And so do they have to be as wide as, as they are? Again, if you look at the picture, we we went through this because we went through a whole $12,000 rigmarole of, of getting to the point of approval for a pool. Which, to, like to the point of approval for a pool, which Ed remembers all too well. Um, and then there was just so much involved. It was costing us too much. But the next people who might live in our house might love to have a pool there. And there really is a river view. And so all we're trying to think about is the, you know, the value of our property in terms of keeping it as, keeping as much of the view shed as is possible, river view shed. And so that's why we raised it. And I don't know if it can be addressed in terms of making it maybe a little less thick or again be, because I'm now just realizing that the bulk takes away much more than the actual little amount of dimension that exists. When well, you're I, I think that the, the location of where the chimney would be, it, it, it's almost from the photo that you sent us would be actually in right in front of several trees. So I don't see how you no, even see, see it. No, so this is one photo. And this is, and that's, and that's in the winter time. Turn over. Right there. Okay. Okay, from here, from here is where we were going to put the pool when we, when we went through this whole thing. And there is a summer view. And granted, it's not a big view. We don't have a big view of the river altogether. Or taxes, though we do, but we don't. Um, so we were just trying to just get as much, keep as much as we can. It, but I, I think, with as Ed is saying, code wise, though, it, it, it can't be any shorter it, than that. With it, there's, it, there's a, it's, it's, a, it's almost as tight as it could be. If, if there's an inch or two, that's that's so almost. With wise, too. Okay. Can we just. Can we, can we yeah, 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 no, we don't want to make enemies of our new neighbors. No, I, I, unfortunately, a masonry chimney needs a lot of clearance. So it starts lower, is that what the problem is? Mm -hmm. Or it starts it's higher? It's much bigger, it's much bigger below the roof. Okay. Right. Any other comments from any members of the audience? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
<coughs> any comments from anybody else on the board? No, I think we'll, Marianne, do you have a draft resolution on this item? So that's to go to the DBA, right? Yes. In April 2018, Karen and Claudia Houston applied for site plan approval to construct an addition, including a new chimney and modifications to the deck at their house at 30 Half Moon Lane, which is located in the View Preservation District. Although the improvements reduce coverage on the site, of variance for coverage is still required. How Engineering reviewed the plans, and in a memorandum dated April 3rd, listed a number of issues, most of which were addressed to Han's satisfaction in a subsequent submission. The planning board held a public hearing on April 4th and May 2nd, whereas the plans originally submitted sought to widen the two existing chimneys on the house by up to six inches on each face in order to change the facing from brick to stone. And neighbors appeared at the public hearing and stated that this change would impact their view of the Hudson River. And whereas the applicants revised their plans to replace the existing brick finish of the chimneys with stone of the same sick thickness as the brick, Planning Board finds the proposed improvements would not meaningfully impact the view of the Hudson River from neighboring properties. The action is a type 2 action under CEQA and therefore requires no environmental review. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Planning Board grants the application for site plan approval of the improvements reflected in the drawings entitled Houston Residence, prepared by Arthur Chabon Architects, um, and the Landscape and Tree Protection Plans, prepared by Stephen Krog and the stormwater management plan prepared by Hudson Engineering, subject to uh, one, receiving a variance for coverage from the Zoning Board of Appeals, and two, compliance with the Han memo dated May 1st, 2018. I have a motion to approve. <laughs> to approve. So. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Okay. Next item is 2018-08, Susan Fader and Todd Gordon, 53 Jaffa Court. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Daniel Lau with the firm of Cuddy and Fader. Here on behalf of the homeowners, Todd Gordon and Susan Fader. Um, uh, the, uh, as you'll recall, the plan is, is for some revised landscaping and, and revised terrace at the uh, proposed premises. Um, we are in receipt of the memo dated uh, May 1st from Han Engineering. That requires uh, additional detailed uh, information from our engineer. Um, that information has been conveyed to, to him to, to work on that uh, so that we can provide that for the village's review. Um, as, as noted in the memorandum, the, uh, the project does require some variances. Um, so what we would actually request procedurally this evening is that uh, while we're given time to um, address those uh, comments, maybe perhaps we can be referred to the Zoning Board of Appeals to address those variances and, and then we would be able to come back to you with uh, revised information from the engineer and, and in response to all the comments that have been received to date uh, and then uh, hopefully with the variances that we are, are, are in need of. Okay. Any comments from any members of the board? No? Any comments from anyone in the public on this matter? Just looking around, does anybody have any problem with sending them on to the ZBA at this point? They'll have to come back and address all these issues right. that are in this memo from Han. And just looking to see if any of these will be affected by the variance. And I'm assuming that the coverage, you're yeah, reducing the coverage, it shouldn't be a problem. It should not be an issue for the, the ZBA. So, I mean, I'm okay with sending them on to. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think you can go on and just address all these comments. Yeah. And I think also the venue went to the Tree Commission, too, for the that large um, Well, there's the, the well, maple there, tree. The, the sugar maple at the rear of the property, um, since the uh, original appearance um, was, apparently it was it had been in poor condition, then the storm sort of has done it in. So uh, as per the, the you know, we, we did provide an arborist letter in that, uh, in that regard, and then um, I think it was reviewed by the, the village's um, uh, landscape uh, ar arborist um, to indicate that I think the request is, I think, two, two and a half inch trees to at, replace. Right, at least two and a half inch yeah. trees. Yeah. Yes. 
just so the record's complete on this, the applicants did go to the, even though they didn't have to, but they went to the tree preservation, the tree commission on this. And the tree commission um, did approve the removal of that tree subject to the replacement, um, well, not replacement of it, but, you know, uh, planting two um, two and a half inch caliper um, shade trees, shade trees hardwood shade trees. And, uh, and that was pretty much the same recommendation with, without her knowing what the Tree Commission um, had recommended that um, the uh, villagers consultant. So it, it, it did come from the Tree Preservation Commission and uh, Landscape Consultant. Thank you. Any other comments? Any comments from anyone in the audience on this matter? I think we can go to the ZBA and then respond to these issues for our next meeting. Very yeah. good. All right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Sure. Next item is 2018-05, Emily and Benjamin Burley, 26 Lewis Road. So I'm Malone, Ferguson Millen Milan Architects, um, representing Benjamin and Emily Burley. Uh, so we have a few comments that we received from from Han that we can review with you today. The first three comments were related to the uh, proposed uh, retaining wall that's associated with the primary uh, subject field. Uh, the uh, first one uh, refers to a clay berm being shown indicated as the retaining wall, is that what you meant to say? Or we're showing the clay berm behind the existing uh, the, the, the architectural show the wall in the location that civil show the clay berm. That so health department it actually highlights the clay berm. I think it's just that the plans aren't corresponding with each other. the the this no, I see the detail though if uh, if you look at your site plan. The site plan. See where that wall, is, <coughs> the wall is? Right. Now, if you look at the other, uh, the health department approved one. Um. Well, even go to the um, the sill drawing. You can see the wall is is actually on the property line, just on the edge. So the wall, the wall, and in the civil. See the wall right on the property line. Okay. So now, if you look at his. Um, Septic plan, you'll see the clay burn is back. Okay, yeah, so I'm glad I All right, so we'll revise our architectural site plan to put it in the same location. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, the construction, obviously, the wall, if it butts up in the property line, we want to see how that's going to. Okay. So, the, you know, the plan is to, is to build that wall right on the property line. We would get um, a licensing agreement from temporary, temporary yeah. licensing agreement easement in order to build the wall, and there would be insurances associated with that. Do you guys need to see that now, or do you just need to see a note that indicates that that's going to be the case? That license agreement would have to be approved by the village attorney. It's no, it's, it would be between the uh, between the. Uh, it's, 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 it's it's submit it here so that we can I should review it. Yeah, it, yeah but not, not, not it's between, between yeah. the property and Make sure it's which is put in yourself. Okay, so if we should submit it as part of. Yes. Okay. Right, I just want to make sure that we have that right. I'll do that right. Okay. Um, the stone wall details should include the property line. So uh, on that one, Doug, our detail, you should just indicate the, the property line in the section detail that we're trying to. Okay, so then the, the fourth item was related to um, uh, the wetlands application. Um, in the fifth item, you're asking for some changes to the design points that were used and the watershed delineations associated with the stormwater. So we're assuming that that would affect. So we'll, we'll make those stormwater changes and then review uh, those changes with um, Beth Evans, our consultant, and make any modifications to the letter. Yeah, why don't you? Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, why don't you have Peter Gregory, you know, give me a call so we can I can speak to him about it and we can make sure we can, you know, okay. revise him. We'll get that exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Okay, I think you know of the items that you're listing on the wetlands side. I think those would be um, 
you know, those could be addressed once that Peter picks up the changes that you yeah. uh, identified there. Um, so the so we don't have to go through the civil stuff. The civil stuff had to do with the basis that was being used for calculating the size of the stormwater system, and then also the impact of how the water is moving through the site and off off the site. So we'll clarify that in this final one. Seven item seven uh, refers to the size of the driveway. So that's something that I want to talk about today. I think. We have sized that driveway in order to provide maneuverability, you know, access to the new, um, access to the new garage, but then maneuverability so you can back up and go down the curvy driveway head first. Uh, I think you have, the way I was looking at it, you have enough that you've, in essence, created a hammerhead on the left side of the of that parking area. Right. So that you could back that way and then turn and do your turn and then go down the driveway. My concern was. Uh, there are a number of trees that are being removed on the site, particularly for the septic field. Now, there is one good tree that it, it's in good condition. It's called out in the report, and is that no, uh, not, not there. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying overall. Oh, okay. All right, but in the front of the house, there were two trees, uh, right in that depressed depression area, oh. to just below where you were just pointing. To. In here. Yes. And one of the trees now, which is in good condition, I think it was either an 18 or a 24-inch tree, was being removed because the driveway is being extended farther into that depressed area. And you're creating a five-foot retaining wall there. In, in this area here? You go, right there. Right, right. There, exactly. Yeah, no, that, the, tree that, the tree that was being removed in that area was actually was related to the foundation of the building, that there's a large tree that's being eliminated right here, I think, is what well, it was. Why don't you go to the tree, the oh, demolition? Yeah. Didn't look like it looked like it was closer to that driveway. <clears throat> oh, these these two here, right? So you're talking about TR three. I was talking about TR one. Right. So, so I think if, if you if you move that wall back and shorten it, you you could probably save that tree. That that tree. Before we go to lengths to save that tree, it's important to know what that tree is doing. That tree is coming out of the ground. The, the larger tree that's by the foundation is the, is the stronger, the nicer of the trees. The tree that would require um, that you are asking us to look into saving, which is this one, is actually coming at an angle like this across the driveway at a very low angle. And I don't think it's, it's one of these trees that, you, that would, be, would make sense. The canopy is actually offset you know, over into this area like that. Right. And well, it's... Yeah. I, I, I'd just like to go right. back out and take a look at that again, because because it's being noted as a, a tree in good condition. So I, I'm trying to reduce the number of trees in good condition that you're going to take down, because you're taking down a number in the backyard f to create the septic field, right, right. and potentially for the, um, the expansion field, Somewhere down the road, there could be more trees. Hopefully, by that time, a lot of the other trees will have grown back by the time you ever need that expansion field. But I'm trying to save as many trees as possible out there. If so, yeah, what you're talking, if, if we yeah. took this wall and brought it back, I mean, the garage doors are right here. I think one of the reasons why we're showing this is sometimes when you come in and out of a garage door, it's good to have a little excess, uh, especially when it's a, a potential over, you know, fall. Well, I was looking at it. I mean, you, your garage doors are nine feet wide. There's four feet in between the two garage doors. And there's another four feet on the <coughs> wall side of, of, yeah, okay. of garage. So we can, we so, can. So if you can see if you can pull it back, okay. you might be able to save something. And in addition, you can just reduce the impervious surface that you create. Okay. Because that, that parking area right there is 90 by 30. That's you know, over 2,700 square feet of, of impervious surface you're creating. I mean, some of it exists, right. I understand, but you're expanding it. Right, so so this just to be clear, the the existing uh, driveway was up into this area. So we did pull out the area that was associated with the turn around the corner there. So we can pull this we can pull this wall back flush with yes, the side of the house. And, yes, you can. And, uh, see I just I worry though that the tree I, and and we'll do that as part of the but I worry that that tree is. Well, if you want to let the arborists take a look at it and save if it's not worth saving, but again, he said it was a tree in good condition on the tree report, so that's why I was trying to save right, right, right. Why not try and save that tree? Okay. Okay. Um, so then uh, the, um, the next item on there, 
were landscape landscape architect related items. There were three items that uh, Suzanne had for us. The first was a request that we provide the proposal for the invasive species management contractor. Um, is that something that needs to happen at this phase, or is it something that can happen prior to construction, <coughs> prior to building permit? I think we want to see it as part of the the approval process to make sure that what's in that plan is acceptable to our landscape architect. Right. I mean, the alternative would be as for us to detail it, expand the note that indicates the required mitigation and. You know, I, I think part of the thing that she's asking for is to make sure that it's a two-year process on a quarterly basis. Um, you know, th that could be added to the note, and that would probably make it. Uh, you know, the proposal that we get at this point, you know, we're a few months off at least from the beginning of construction. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it would make more sense to wait and and e either expand the note, which would be more t typical, so like it would be a, a well as mitigation. Well, I, I think we want to make sure that what's in the proposal is satisfactory and, and will accomplish what we're trying to do here and what landscape architect is recommending is trying to preserve those wetlands and not you know, and even make them better as a means of mitigating the loss of the trees on the site because right. the trees aren't being replaced one for one. So if we're, we're trying to get you know, some additional mitigation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I agree. I'm just thinking, like, we have a wetlands consultant on the yeah. project. We could have them write the detailed note that brings a scope as opposed to providing the proposal That's from a specific contract. Why not go into coming up with the scope? Yeah. I'm sorry? Why not come up with the scope, then? If they're, they're on already, just come up with the scope of the work. He doesn't make the yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I would expect. No, he's going to define on his drawings. Oh, I thought he was saying. That he's he's going to define the scope of work, but then it's going to get bid out to actually Fine, do yeah. it. Right, right. Rather than give you a proposal, I think it's a better. Right. Okay. Find, okay. Define the scope of work, yes. They, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Is that okay? okay. If we do it that way? Yeah. All right. Uh, she asked that we modify the plant list slightly, which we can do that. And then the last note was about uh, providing screening <laughs> on the neighboring <laughs> property. Uh, you know, one of the benefits of not <coughs> building out the retaining wall and the secondary field right now would be that we wouldn't have to provide off-property screening, that we can provide the screening, the required screening on our property. So I'm, I'm confused about that. Now, we had shown the off-property screening as part of the, uh, well, the expansion, second, of the expansion the the field. Septic field. Right, right. So, I mean, the screen, we are showing, you know, screening similar to what we would have okay. shown off-site in terms of that. I, I just, I'm not sure why we would, we would also show additional screening off-site. What, what's the height of, uh, what's the height of the wall at the back by the, the proposed septic field? This, this wall? Yeah, that wall back there. That's about four feet four at feet. the highest, two to four feet. Is it the same property owner that wraps around the it, side? It is, too? it is. Because I, I know he, it was John Siegel, was he the gentleman who sent the letter in saying that he would he would, but it was, okay it was about that. a property that was over here. There was a concerned oh. neighbor on this side that would wanted potential screening of any new construction on this. That's where sort of this, the distance from here to John Siegel's house is. Additional screening is not needed. There's a forest between those two, and I don't, I don't think there's really any benefit to adding additional screening there. So um, I, I would argue that the screening in this location is meeting the purpose that the intent was. The area that we were talking about doing off screening and what we had shown in earlier drawings was in this area. I, I don't know, maybe others know this, but I don't. Um, did the health department um, make a decision on whether they need the uh, reserve area prepared now, meaning cutting all the trees and? They, they gave us uh, written procedures that were sent to Doug about how, you know, it, that, that they yeah, we, did, Caesar, we did receive some confirmation from the health and, department. And what was it? They don't require They don't require it as long as there's access. And in this location, there's access, and so it's not an issue. If it was on maybe the far side and you had to work your way out, then they would require it. But in this so case, the, the, the so preparation for the reserve area is not necessary at this time? Correct. I'm willing to let that go as long as, unless the neighbor comes back and says, oh, you know, I wanted some screening on the property. Well, we'll be talking to John about the licensing uh, okay. agreement in that area, right, for the work he in that area. Confirmation so we'll, we'll so talk to him and just make sure that he addresses okay. that yeah. at that point. Okay. okay. I think so that's, that's it. And we'll, that's we'll it. Take no, I'm, I'm not finished. Huh. 
I, I'm still convinced that a, 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 pub, a sewer can set up a septic system. And you, you haven't convinced me. I mean, what did you do a, a cost-benefit analysis of putting in this septic system with the involvement of the wall and and going? If you can't get the easements, where the easier road going going down the other way down to Lewis Road, I don't know how far it is. Do you know off the top of your head how difficult that would be? Uh, you know, hundreds of feet. 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 Hundreds of we, we live at 22 Lewis Road, and um, we've been working on getting a sewer for 22 and 24 Lewis Road, and we've spent upwards of $300,000 to do that, and there is no option to add a third member to that sewer. Right. What, kind, what kind of sewer were you at? Was it an 8-inch sewer? Or a, it, it, it makes a difference on course. No, if the two houses in one, does it become a public sewer? Then? They're in the process right now of finishing up a project that, I'm not sure if it's a six or an eight inch going up to the house, but it goes through different, it's, it, would be, it would be an uphill. So you need a, a yeah. Right now, I think it's a four inch through from their existing house through the neighboring house to the common sewer, so they'd have to go. Well, that's a public sewer, two houses. It's not a public sewer, they're going to a public sewer on the neighboring property. Two entities are connected to one More pipe. than one. Get it right. Yeah. More than one. Which is two. Yeah. And they can't, they can't tie into the four inch. It, it becomes a public sewer. That's right. Okay. Is, will this be a public sewer? Unable to tie in. They'd have to come down their driveway, down the shoulder of Lewis Road, all the way to the corner of Lewis and Emory, Emory right now. Or get an easement from Mr. Derby, which they approached and is not interested in. Which would be a much re more reasonably cost idea, but he's not. Caesar, we also address, we also looked at the adjacent neighbor uh, and asked them, and they were also not interested. So we pursued three different sewer paths to the north. The, you know, we, we did we did put um, effort into it. We designed you know did preliminary design for those paths. We did wet, wetlands analysis associated with the various paths. They just are not without without someone giving us an easement, they're not feasible. Okay. That might have been the meeting you missed, because they, they presented a letter or a memo in the packet. Uh, I remember that. Picks. Okay, I'll explain that. So, yeah. I'd like to see a sewer, too, but uh, it's just as impractical. <laughs> so yeah. wait. For the yeah. record, we would, yeah. too. It's just as impractical, unfortunately. But, okay, so I think if you address those, John. Okay, we'll address right. those. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I draw it closer, okay? I'm going to stay. Thanks. Uh, item 5 is 2018-11, Claire Cornish and Mark Keith, 85 North Broadway. Oh, uh, Hillary Chanel, Chanel is recused on this matter. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we are Sharetta Council for Claire Cornish and Mark Keith. We're here with me this evening. And also with me this evening from Hudson Engineering is Ubud Abdullah. Uh, we're here tonight really for a legalization of what are a or stepping stones, uh, small retaining walls, and I would say retaining walls, I think the largest is about 20 inches high. It's really a garden. Um, my clients have moved to Irvington about 18 years ago. And in 2000, they purchased this home, and in so doing, uh, in the course of the years there, they placed bluestone stepping stones along the, the rear yard, making the path. Uh, there is separation between those bluestones, so there's grass in between, and they also put up these. Okay, I'll call them retaining walls, but I think the highest wall is 20 inches in height. Uh, you have a couple here that are eight inches in height. So we're over by coverage by 15%. So when we're looking this evening, uh, we're looking to hopefully get referred to the zoning board to legalize this. And we're also going to be removing uh, some of these stones. We're proposing to remove approximately 286 square feet of walkway to be removed. And in so doing, when these were put in here, uh, there was no machinery, uh, no construction. These were done by hand. 
Uh, we had, I believe, the relievers that came in and wheelbarrow and placed the stones, and they will be removed in the same fashion. Uh, there will be no trees affecting the vegetation. Just literally, we're going to be picking up these stones. They weren't. There's no concrete involved. I'm just picking them up and removing them from the site. Can you just go to flip to the um, the sheet that shows the areas to be demolished and removed? So, and you'll see here on the site plan it states a new walk to be removed, 62 square feet. Uh, we have also 68 square feet on the walkway to be removed. Again, these are the pavers, the, uh, the, step, the stepping stones, I'll call them. Uh, we have a, a, a AC pad to be removed. Again, it's also the same type of stone. And on the other side here, you have a, a new walk to be removed. When I say new, this was put in about, I think it was like 2005 when we put them in, 2006. So these are going to be removed. Again, most of it's all of the, the stepping stones being and again, on, on these retaining walls here, these are their flowers on the other side of it, a small little garden. Again, when they put these in, they're from, they came in from the UK. They didn't think that putting stepping stones in our code would, would run afoul of the coverage, but it did. They're looking to now sell their home and relocate within Irvington, but they want to legalize this so they can sell this home and purchase a new home in Irvington. Okay. Any comments from, oh, any comments? Any comments from anyone in the audience on this matter? No? I, yeah, I don't think it's a problem. You know, I think you can go to the, the ZBA with this and then just respond to, just confirm on the plans those items that you just addressed, what's being taken out, and that's going to be done by wheelbarrow and by hand, and, and no machines are coming out of the site. Correct. I mean, we did receive... Any trees, if there are any trees in the area, that will be affected by... Yep, there will be no trees affected, and we did receive Hans memo of May 1. Again, I know whether you can address those. I mean, I'd love to have a full subject too, but I understand if we can just get to the zoning board, uh, get the variance for the coverage and hopefully I get this approved because, again, they, we have a time frame just because of the, the sale of their property. And I think I may have to do this for the one that's coming in, too. <laughs> yeah, well, the buyers. So, yeah, just, just address all those issues. You go to the ZBA now, and then yep. next month should be approved. Sure. Here. Okay. Okay? Thank you very much. Right. Appreciate it. I hope the house you're buying is uh, all legal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have the same issue there. Yeah, same issue. I'll be back. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good night. That's you too. And last item is. Um, Thank you. Here. Last item is 2015 28 Kimberly and Jane Gray make 20 strawberry. Thank you. Nobody here? Uh, well. Strawberry Lane? Nobody's here. Yeah. Yep. Somebody Somebody's outside? Coming. Yeah. Somebody's coming. Oh, strawberry? Strawberry yeah. Lane? I do strawberry? Oh, yeah. Just. Came up, so yeah. it's hot. We almost, we almost closed the meeting. No. A little faster. Hi. Someone left their phone in here. Oh, I wonder if that's true. Um, my name is Elizabeth gonzalez Kijo. I'm the landscape architect that um, has prepared the plans for on behalf of the residents and owners, James and Ken Raby. Um, this was submitted at... This was submitted as a revision to a previously approved plan. I understand that there have been many comments back from the engineer. I just reviewed them earlier today. Um, and you could detail exactly what it is. I mean, there was an approved site. Yes. What is being changed from the approved site? I actually... I brought some very s smaller copies of the pre the most recently approved plan. For your reference. Sorry, my So in the previous approval, the driveway was being removed have a cut farther down the hill. Um, in this, the, the clients have requested to keep the driveway cut where it is and the width of it is remaining. The only change to the driveway is that this existing wall here will, and we, we're moving an existing wall back just slightly and giving them access down to their mudroom, but creating a flatter um, 
driveway. I know there isn't um, a full grading plan. There were some spot grades provided um, on the drawings that were submitted. But basically, the way this driveway exists is you go over the asphalt swale up a fairly steep driveway, and then this part starts to go back down the hill. So in an effort to make it more comfortable, a little bit more maneuverable for them and fit two cars here instead of just one, they we've just widened it a little bit, extending it to an existing wall that's just realigned slightly, but otherwise is staying in the, in the general location that it actually already is. Are you changing the elevation, though, of the, um, of the, um, of the parking area there? This part will most likely stay the same. If anything, it'll just shave it down a little, and this will raise. So it will just, it'll be a really minor grading change because we, we don't want to affect the steps that exist. This is an existing wall and an existing staircase. We don't anticipate changing the grade of that at all. The only thing that does change in this area is there's an existing retaining wall that cuts through, and there's some concrete and odd things in the garden that exist. What we're doing is pushing this back and then uh, realigning this other staircase which wraps around as it exists and comes straight through to just give them a little bit more space and bring the wall away from the house slightly because it is it's fairly odd and so in terms of the proposed the, the changes they're very minimal to that part of the design just the arrangement has changed slightly and the location of those steps does it require a wall or anything at, uh, at the um Will be the west end of the parking area where you change yes 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 there will that's that's where there will be a wall and then steps going down with the hand railing as well and that would be um uh, an engineered wall right. just as this would be <coughs> the wall parallel almost parallel to the road just to the left of the two yes. cars that is that existing you said so Currently, that wall comes in slightly, just like this, and so we're just, and, but it's kind of crumbling and falling apart. It's an old stacked stone wall, so basically we're just realigning it and, and tidying you're it making up. making it higher or lower? If you're going to raise the pavement, you're going to make it higher? That wall is currently higher on this side of the driveway so as it is, it. so you don't have to raise it. It's really just neat, neatening it, tidying it up and just tightening it up. Then you're doing some other changes to the landscaping, which I can show. Plantings. Right. Mostly plantings. Um, also, we have reduced some of the hardscape in this garden and basically just created the bluestone path from here to here. The rest would be a decorative gravel with steel edging and lawn panels. And this would just be garden ornament and plantings. Um, there would, this is an extremely steep slope that currently exists and it's eroding because there's a lot of Norway. The grass isn't growing, nothing's really growing. What we're proposing to do is lay a jute fabric down and do a ground cover uh, along the entire slope so that s the roots will develop, something that will tolerate the shade, it won't ever need to be mown, and then we'll scatter in some viburnum to just get that to hold a little bit better than what exists. And also it'll be much, much prettier. On one plan, there was a shed shown to the north. Of that's the been removed wall. since that's the last. Okay. That's why it's not it's not shown any longer. It's been removed. Any other comments? Are there any coverage issues? Because it looks to me like your your drive is bigger than what it is here. Um, in terms of coverage, we just go ahead and pull up my numbers. We we are over the pro current. Coverage is over. Um, this plan reduces it by about 240. You know, they, they did on the original plan get it. They did on the last go round get a variance for coverage. Um, the, the, the problem is the way the variance reads, I pulled it out, is that you had it as long as the um, plan, um, as long as the project was built in accordance with the paper submitted. And it's now n no longer, I think, in accordance with the paper submitted because there seems to 
be maybe some changes. So it's, I, I think you probably have no choice. I'll have no choice but to go, go back to the to the zoning board. I'm sure it won't be a big deal since there's less coverage. But the way their decision reads, it wouldn't apply in this case. Doug, I mean, you had a number of items on there, major right? Doug, yeah. there are a number of items in your in your memo. Are there major items that have to be addressed? Um, we wanted to clarify the coverage. Just to make sure. Well, right. Sure. I was, I, because this was a revision and I was not involved in the previous plans, I'm a new professional involved in the project, I went back and looked at all of the submittals that had been done and tried to be as consistent as possible with the information that they provided and giving you new, new coverage. And so I'm confused <laughs> because I was trying to do my due diligence and, and make it as clear and concise as it was previously. but. Um, I and, and I followed basically exactly what they had done to to try to make it, okay. you know, um, clean and concise. Oh, so, okay. So here's a question: the building coverage. Do drive or is the driveway supposed to be factored into building coverage? I went back and I looked because I looked through all of this. I went back and I looked at that, and I I don't see what you see. There were some things that I think were missing. I'll, I'll double check. Okay. I don't know. If okay. I, I think a chart showing existing, yeah, previously approved <clears throat> and proposed, showing the plan with what's being removed, what's okay. being added, and then a separate <laughs> plan showing what the proposed, just highlighting what's being removed, better help you with the ZBA as well, to make it an easier approval process. Previously approved existing now and proposed now. Right. Just, just, just a, a highlighted. Just a highlight list. Of, even if you list them all out, say. OK, so it's just adding one more row to the chart them. that you have. Yeah. OK. I mean, get rid of the walls in the back around the old dog houses. But, you know, it's the easy one. The gravel. It, it is retaining a little bit of land. And one. as you know, this property yeah. is extremely it was, it was, yeah. steep. So they're, they've kept those walls because it's like your plan shows them <clears> the walls in the back. The walls in the back, they're not on your plan. Oh, they're just that part, of, that part of the property is just cut off. Okay. It's just cut off you know, because I'm not the, touching it. Okay. I'm not touching it, so I didn't include it. Yeah. The uh, gravel beds are considered coverage. They're a combination of building material. Um, even if it is a decorative surface that's got a filter fabric? Gravel beds are a combination of building materials that are considered as coverage. Assistance. Hmm? And um, I think that has stuff to us. I think you'd be in a better position to send them to the ZBA after we saw all that stuff. So you need to see this again? Yes. As they would like the there's a lot, there's a lot of... Um, Clarity that's needed. Okay. And there needs to be a licensed engineer or architect on this, not a landscape. May I ask why a landscape architect can't? We can discuss that offline if you want. Okay. Like. Any other comments? Any comments? Any comments from anyone in the audience? No? Okay. Well, I think then address these issues, come back, and then. Send you on to the CBA because you need to see the correct numbers before the correct numbers. numbers. We need to have for the CBA. Anyway. It looks positive, but right. we need the correct numbers. So my coverage probably won't change from the last time but I, without because gravel, of the gravel. Stuff, I don't know. Okay. okay. Thank you. Let's have a motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? All right. Aye.